Hi guys, how are you today? I have here a bare rooted plant that I don't intend to keep growing like that. This one is my Renanthera monachica, monachica. It is a very well known species among orchid collectors because it's a species that has been propagated for a long time. It's produced beautiful orange flowers. It's compact, so it's perfect for home growers as well. I had th that one before, but I lost it this year. And uh, I purchased it again and I unboxed it here with you from, was a box from Spices Orchids. And it has been bare-rooted since then, which can be a problem, especially because I'm traveling for 20 days, so I don't intend to keep it without any water and just hanging in the air like so. So I need to pot that before I go, and I thought that would be nice to take you along. I have another video about Rembrandt Thera Monarchica. I'll link it down below for you where I'll probably show you some of the blooms and talk to you a little bit more about that. This video is not a care tutorial about the, this Renanthera. I'll just talk generally about it, but I will report it with you and show you. Maybe you'll find it interesting if you decide to buy one someday soon, or if you have one already. So if you don't know, this Renanthera is found in the Philippines, in one island. It's a hot growing species. It's a monopodio. What's monopodio? It's like Phalaenopsis and Vandas. This one is a foundation orchid. It has a central axis that you push through one leaf after another leaf. Different from other orchids, there are sympodios that produce one growth after another growth. This one will grow upwards. So we have a central axis here. It's also an epiphyte that grows attached to trees, tree trunks. As an epiphyte, it has roots that are adapted to grow in the air. However, to help us with our watering routine, we pot this plant up in a mix that offers air and humidity, but also doesn't suffocate the root system. So these are some general requirements that this plant has. Mine, the one that I had, bloomed for me under growing lights. So I will keep it on my shelving, growing under growing lights, and hopefully to be able to push out a flower spike for me. Usually these plants, they bloom in spring, at least that's when mine bloomed last time. And the flower spike will come here between two leaves. You'll notice one flower spike sprouting and pushing out the beautiful and orange cascade of blooms. This plant will grow much taller and larger than what it is right now, but it's usually a slow growing type of orchid, so it will keep compact for a long time. And I don't imagine it becoming as large and big as one of the big vantas, so it's perfect if you don't have much space and you want to grow a foundation orchid as well. I hope you find it locally where you live. So let's start repotting this plant because it is thirsty and I need to take a proper care of it. So ta-da, this is my table. I will reuse the same pot this plant came up with because it doesn't have any snails or anything, any sort of pests inside, so it's perfect. I have here park and moss. These are the meats that I usually pot my orchid up. These orchids, they hot growing type of orchid, so I will add more bark than moss because I live in a temperate climate and it will help with my roots adapting to a to the mix instead of adding too much moss and having a super moist mix that this plant's not even adapted to. I need to remove this flood of moss. My mix is dry. I didn't water this one before I repotted. That's just it's a mistake. So to help out with your repotting, don't do that. Just water your wood beforehand. I didn't have much time today, so I'm just going with it, going with the flow. So let's try to remove the whole old mix here from the base of this orchid. And that's it. I didn't have many roots or many mix or many mix, or much mix attached to this system. So we are done, and I'm gonna cut the dead roots. These dead roots that are extremely thin here in the front. And I don't have many more dead roots. They are just dry. They need to be watered. 
which they will well, as soon as they are inside the new pot. So that's all. I'm not going to spray hydrogen peroxide because this orchid usually is grown hanging or I am sure it was just potted just before I acquired it. So I'm not care that I will find a snail inside this pot. For this reason, I'm just go straight adding some moss and bark. I do the same that I do at the time, a little bit of moss at the bottom. And I keep adding bark as well. I'm pre-recording all of these videos because I'm going to be away. <laughs> I have never been so good in recording videos. Usually, they are all super last minute because I'm traveling for a long time. I'm trying to let everything ready before I go. Hopefully, I'll have videos until the week that I'm back. And hopefully, my plants will survive as well. I have between my family. If I have time, last time that I went to Brazil, I couldn't go to an Alfred nursery. But if it is open now, because Brazil is like the main holidays are, are now, we have the summer holiday, children are out of school, everything closed around New Year's Eve. So if things are open, I'm trying to record a, a nursery there to this tea nursery. Nice to think I work it, but I don't know if I manage to because where is the microphone? Oh my goodness, okay. Okay, so I don't know if you heard anything that I said before. The mic was on the floor, just realized. Just make sure that it... at least I'm recording. Oh, I was saying that I'm going to Brazil and I'll try to film something in there. I've just added moss and bark. Uh, I just add moss and bark here and all the roots were alive i'm just adding a slow release fertilizer usually when they choose orchids they are have feathers and i am adding more market and moss but even so a little bit of moss near the root system i am almost done this orchid doesn't have many roots which helps with the process of repotting Hopefully this one will be healthy. The last one caught a fungus, some sort of fungus infection that affected some of my orchids. And I didn't caught it on time. And when I tried to treat it, I think it was too late. So it died. But it's one of these orchids that I want to have in my collection, you know. This one and the Vitellina, I bought them together. I lost both of them this year and I, I decided that I want to purchase it again. And I'm so happy that I did. So I have here my plant fully reported. Finally, I came to it. I'm going to add the tag. Let me remove this from here. It's and I have a nice pot. I hope you can see everything. I will change the camera now to conclude the video. But look how cute it is. <laughs> Ta-da! My orchid's fully repotted. I don't know if you missed it half of the video because of the mic. Hopefully I'll be able to save it. I think this pot, I think this pot is so, so cute. Don't you? Especially looks like this is the hair, some sort of punk hair. My little punk orchid, <laughs> sorry. Ah, I love it, love it so, so much. Anyway, this is my stylish orchid and I am in love. Hopefully this one will do much better than the last one because I honestly enjoy this hybrid so, so much. And I, it will be okay when I'm back from my holidays let me know how you report your plants, your orchids. Let me know if you have the Renanthera monarchica with you. If you had bloom before, what do you think about its blooms? I think they are gorgeous. I love the contrast, I love the color combo, and I love how compact it is as well, because when the issues orchids are lovely, aren't they? What do you think? I, I would have a ton of them if I had more space, but I don't, so. For now, I will keep my mind where it should be. And on this little one, I will offer it some water just now, place it on my shelving, and hopefully I will show you some blooms soon. 
Let me know if you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button, leave a comment down below. Let me know what is your favorite orchid. And I will see you next week. Bye bye.